So X570 motherboard comes with beefier VRMs, more bandwidth, and PCIe 4.0 but they also do cost quite a lot more than its previous generation X470. And the whole question is, can we get a motherboard which delivers all that the X570 chipset promises and keep it affordable? Well, that is exactly what Asus is trying to do with its entry-level first-time builder all-rounder Prime X570-P, a board with one mission and one mission only, to work for everyone, everywhere, and affordably. Yeah, I think that's it. Did I forget one? Now, the whole challenge here is to deliver a very focused motherboard, which does not sacrifice anything to performance, quality, or premium manufacture, and in the same time, keep it really, really affordably. And Asus really cannot get this wrong because the Prime series is their best-selling motherboard of any kind of chipset. This is a Asus board you're most likely to find any build in the world. So yeah, can you feel the pressure? Now, to start with the obvious, the Prime X570P is a six-layered PCB ATX board. It is powered by an AM4 CPU socket, both supporting AMD's Ryzen 2000 CPU series and Ryzen 3000 CPU series. VRM-wise, we have an impressive eight CPU-centric 50 amps power stages organized in four true phases, delivering up to 400 amps of electricity to our poor processor. That is enough to overclock even a 16 physical core processor, which is obviously the maximum you can put on such motherboard. Now, I just want to note that this is not just any VRM. It is exactly the same VRM, the same power stages, the same control module that you would find on much more expensive motherboards, such as a Maximus 11 formula, which costs about 500 bucks. So yeah, even though this is the cheapest X570 motherboard Asus produces, this is also equipped with one of the most expensive VRM they had equipped their Maximus 11 series. I know it's an Intel uh, powered uh, motherboard, but still, that is impressive. All right, so one more thing. You see these capacitors? They are 5,000 hours graded. Those are the very same ones you'll find on tough motherboards, which themselves have a five-year warranty. So overall, a very beefy and premium VRM. And if you couldn't tell yet, I absolutely love it. Now, to keep our phases cool, we have upgraded heat sinks with plenty more of surface to dissipate all that heat. And luckily enough, I did not detect any kind of overheating or thermal throttling at this level. RAM-wise, our board can support up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM overclockable with a Ryzen 2000 series up to 3.6 gigahertz, or more interestingly, with a Ryzen 3000 series up to 4.4 gigahertz. That is a thousand megahertz more than previously available on X470 motherboard. That's that's one of those uh, uh, departments or compartments or elements where Ryzen 3000 has a definite and immediate effect on two performances. Staying in the memory, this board can support up to two M.2 solid state drive sticks, which is very hard to pronounce. With the Ryzen 2000 series, they can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second, and with the Ryzen 3000, up to an incredible 64 gigabit per second, thanks to the PCIe 4.0 Oh, standard. And in both cases, this is going to uh, uh, generate a lot of heat. Uh, luckily, if you're going with PCIe 4.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive, they come with pre-mounted heat sinks. So that's, that's fine. You won't thermal throttle here. But because on our X570P here, we do not have any heat sinks available to us, we are running a risk of thermal throttling. So indeed, if you wanted to boot from an M.2 solid state drive, I would place it right here, far away from our heat producing video card. Now, a little word on our chipset. The X570 chipset needs up to an unprecedented 11 watts of electricity, which is 
twice of its predecessors and producing a lot of heat. And that is why X570 motherboard now come equipped with a blade blower, which despite keeping our chipset very cool, uh, did not make much noise, especially if you keep it behind your tempered glass. Staying in the storage, our board can support up to six 3.0 SATA plugs, meaning six gigabit of data transfer on each plug, which again is not a lot. And as I've been saying for the past few reviews, uh, I, I would like to see the SATA 3.0 gone with and replaced by something a little bit more bandwidthy. Export wise, we have five PCIe slots, three single slot single speeds and two 16 slots with different speeds. Note that coupled with the Ryzen 2000 CPUs, they will run at a PCI third generation standard. And if coupled with the Ryzen uh, 3000, this will double the available bandwidth per lane uh, on our PCIe, and it will be running at a fourth generation PCIe Expresses. Now, that sounds great, and it'll make a big deal of a difference if you put, you know, IOs, USB, or M.2 solid state drive uh, uh, connected on your PCIe export. But when it comes to gaming, you're not gonna see a lot of, or at all, any performance game, uh, simply because our current video cards uh, still do not produce enough bandwidth to bottleneck uh, the older PCIe third generation. So it's great for future proofing. So next year or the year after, you're gonna have those PCI 4.0 uh, video cards, which will output plenty more bandwidth. But for this year, it's, it's like I said, gaming wise, you're not gonna see a bunch lot of, of performance gain. Back on our motherboard, note that only the first 16 slot from the CPU can deliver up to 16 lane speeds. Therefore, this is where you would want to put your uh, video card for optimal performances. And that is why we also have some metallic reinforcements. And our second 16 slots have been capped up to four lane speeds. And here I'm gonna allow myself a little remark. This motherboard cannot support SLI. So if you put two NVIDIA video cards, forget it. It's not gonna work together on any given game. But it is Crossfire compliant, like any other motherboard. Meaning that you can potentially put two different AMD video cards and run them on a game. Uh, and I understand why there wouldn't be any metallic reinforcement if we were running this motherboard in PCIe 3.0. But if you run it with a Ryzen 3000, processor and therefore unlock the PCIe 4.0, then it doubles that bandwidth. And then your video card can run perfectly without any kind of bottleneck. So I would have wanted to see anyways, a metallic reinforcement even on the second 16 slots and something I really hope to see on the next iteration of PCI 4.0 motherboards. IOIs, starting from the left, we have a mouse keyboard PS2 connector, two second generation USB plugs, two 3.2 first generation USB plugs, four 10 gigabit 3.2 second generation USB plugs, a single 1.4B HDMI display outputs, our surge protected one gigabit LAN, and finally our eight channel Realtek budget driven audio in and output. All right, so here I am going to make another remark. Uh, I'm not surprised by the fact there is no IO roofing or integrated plate or Wi-Fi or even more USB uh, plugs or type C's or what have you. This is normal when you're dealing with a, a budget essential driven motherboard. I'm expecting this kind of, of bare bone layout. Where I'm not so happy is the fact that there is no BIOS flashback option on any of the USB plugs. And I think this is the only board where Asus did not add it on, the, on its X570 series. And I'm not sure I understand why, because it wouldn't cost Asus anything more to add it. It's pretty much integrated in the BIOS as it is. So it's a couple of lines of code. So yeah, a regret and something I'd like Asus to, to, um, to add on the next iteration of, of that particular motherboard. Logically moving to our board, we have two second generation USB front panel connectors, as well as two 3.2 first generation five gigabit front panel connector, which here I have to admit, somewhat of a luxury. I was expecting only one, but we have two of those. So very happy and kudos to Asus for this. Cooling wise, the Prime X570P gives us the bare minimum five 
PWM fans, one of which can support an all-in-one water pump, but nothing more. Remember, this is not an enthusiast motherboard, so if you wanted to have something which will run a custom water cooling system, stay away from this and you'll have to upgrade your uh, budget to about $200 and plus to have dedicated water pumps, you know, all that you need to properly run a custom water cooling solution. And talking of essentials, what Asus Fan Gamer Builder would survive without all racing effect craziness all around it? I ask you. Well, if you're not, Asus has added an RGB addressable strip right under its chipset heat shield, as well as three RGB Aura compliant connectors, one of which is addressable. In conclusion, at 160 US dollars, the Prime X570-P is the cheapest fully operational X570 motherboard Asus uh, uh, produced so far. And let me start by this. If you're looking for more options, enthusiastically driven options, QLEDs, troubleshooting, Wi-Fi, more USB, etc., etc., this is not a motherboard for you. You'll probably need to go more around the $200 and, and higher to get where you want to be. This is not the goal of this motherboard. Here we have a focused motherboard stripped from all the non-essentials and, and most importantly, showing off Asus' ability to cost control every of its components and deliver something in a flawless manufacture. So you have the perfect balance between budget and performance, exactly what uh, Asus need to get right with the Prime X570P. And, and sure, I did have a couple of remarks. This is the only X570 motherboard produced by Asus without a BIOS flashback, which I think is important and doesn't cost much to add or something I want to see on the next iteration. And the fact that we did not have a metallic reinforcement on the second 16 slot PCIe, but this seems to be details in front of the fact that this board comes with a truly premium VRM. Again, a VRM which you can see on Maximus 11 series motherboard, much more expensive motherboard, and which can truly operate and overclock 8, 12, or even 16 physical core processors. I mean, you have to really put this back in context at 160 bucks. I mean, the truth is, if you are a budget builder or first time builder and want to be in play with the most powerful components our industry can currently produce, this is where your money wants and needs to be. All right.